What is up, my wizards? Dev from SBMDG. I'm back again with some more Magic Origins spoilers for you. Let's go ahead and kick it off. I don't want to waste much time. We've got a few cards to talk about here today, and a lot of them are really cool. So let's go. Well, we got this last night, and it caused me to stay up till like 5 in the morning to see if they spoiled anything else, and they didn't. This is Blessed Spirits, or Blessed Spirits, depending on your dialect. Yeah, we like wind drakes in limited formats. Uh, you know, 3 mana, 2-2 two, two flyers that are often splashable. This is a really good version of that because it has a strictly, just a great upside on it. Um, and, and there's a card later on in this list that maybe uh, makes a case for mono-white enchantments in standard. You'll see it. I'm really excited about that card. Um, and this could slot into that like super well, but all things considered, I'm not seeing it in standard except for in that one deck. So I, I, I love the artwork. It's going to look really, really good in foil. It has the best flavor text I've seen on a card in a long time. So if, if you know, just based on design and aesthetics, this card gets like a 17, but all things considered in standard, it's probably not great. But in limited, it's fantastic. Let's have a discussion about Bounding Crisis. This is um, fixed Pestermite, we're calling it. Um, don't sleep on that ability. We slept on Pestermite for a couple of weeks when Lorwyn first came out, and then it became one of the most impactful cards of the last decade of Magic. So <laughs> don't sleep on this. We're seeing a cool Simic deck shape up that is just oh so Simic in the things that it likes to do with Ice Feather Raven and this, and a couple of other things. You throw in Den Protector and Death Mist and just have a day of it. So I, I do enjoy this card quite a bit. Three mana, three three, flash with a relevant ability. Very good and we'll see some play. Here is Nissa's Pilgrimage. Well, we were waiting on something like this, a land ramp card for Nissa's benefit. Um, this reminds me of things like, you know, obviously Kodama's Reach, Haro, Cultivate. It only it might be the best version of that card ever printed. Um, it can only go get the forest, which kind of sucks, but three forest is really good. If we see Landfall again in Zendikar, which I hope we do love Landfall. I hate drawing lands when I don't need them, so, and Landfall makes it good. So I hope we get Landfall back. That would be just incredible. But this is really good once Sylvan Carry added Rose rotates, and we haven't seen a new version of Elvis Mystic yet, which kind of worries the hell out of me, but if we don't have better, um, you know, things for this kind of stuff, post-rotation, you know, ramp, then this will definitely see play, and it could even see play right this second. I like this card. Here is Dark Petition. It's nothing if not interesting. Now, just don't even look at the cost. Just read the text on the card. The text is incredibly powerful. They've jammed Dark Ritual and Demonic Tutor onto the same card here. Um, only it costs a lot of mana. We have to have the five to get it to work, but that text is just so good. I, a lot of the time, I think in Standard especially, we're going to be searching for things that cost more than that three mana, but we could just be searching for removal or something like that, you know. I think Sadisi's probably a better or just as good option um, as this is, but the text on the card is so powerful that I cannot count this card out. Free mana is very good and tutoring is very good. So, and five actually in, in, in context is not that much. So I think this card will probably do things in, in something. Let's talk for just a second here about Tainted Remedy. A lot of people are like, nah, this card. But I actually think this has some applications. Obviously, um, a Corsair of Crufix makes that card worse. Um, there's some things in Modern, but we're already playing Skullcrack in Modern. Um, Ordeal of Heliod against the standard um, heroic decks. Seeker of the Way and any lifelink creatures, you know, and Jeskai Charm when they cast that. There's, there's definitely some things that this does in Standard that's sort of a sideboard card. So I wouldn't be surprised to see it at all. It's like a one or two of them in boards. So Obviously, really good against life linkers. I'll say that again. Let's talk about Flame Shadow Conjuring. Flame Shadow Conjuring, at first I was like, meh, but as, the more I read it, the more I like it. Although four mana for an enchantment is really, I mean, that's, that's a fair, that's a big investment for something that does this. But we do have a lot of very important Enter the Battlefield triggers. Now, I think that this is sort of a fixed Kiki Jiki. It's cool we got the Kiki Jiki and the Pestermite at the same time. Obviously, Kiki Jiki is way better than this, but it just reminds me. Of Kiki. So, uh, again, we have a lot of very relevant Enter the Battlefield triggers, especially a lot in this set, if you've noticed. So, I think that this could be a thing. We're playing other four mana enchantments. I mean, you play Outpost Siege, but Outpost Siege might be better than this. Um, but yeah, I do, I do not mind it. Let's talk about Mana Blood and Hydra for just a second. I don't know that this is very good. Now, some people on some boards are like, this is New Tarmogoyf. I don't know about that. Um, the three mana is, is a bit much. If it costs two, though, it might be broken. Um, obviously, we can excel this out on the second turn and make it a 4-4-5-5 five, five before 
you know, they can even think, but it's obviously very removable, but that's exactly what people said about Goyf. Although I really don't think that this is this has got the legs, uh, all things considered. I just think we have way better stuff than this. It, the, the time investment is not usually great. Um, and, you know, it's not like Goyf where you can just play a 4-5 or five Goyf or whatever. Um, because we already have those cards in the graveyard. We actually have to put a time investment in this no matter what stage of the game we play it in, and I don't like that. Let's talk about Honored Hierarch. Now, this is where it gets a little more interesting. This is our Birds of Paradise, this set. Um, in October, Sylvan Curiated will rotate out, and this will probably be the new thing everybody uses. It sucks that we have to work for that, you know, tap for any mana trigger. I really don't, I'm not a huge fan of that. Although it is a one mana 2-2 two, two, once you get the trigger, that taps for anything. That's a very powerful card. So I do like the card. I don't like the work we have to do. I, but but we, we probably will get it. Though against other aggro and stuff like that, I, not a big fan. And it's it sucks to have Sylvan Carry added for two years and then look at its replacement and think, eh, because, you know, this can be easily removed. It doesn't block aggro creatures as well as carry added, but it is only the one mana, so that's a thing. Let me know what you guys think, because I do think it will obviously, definitely see standard play, but I'm not super hype about it. Home stretch. We got Starfield of Nyx. This is what I was talking about earlier, the old Garfield. We got um a lot of enchantments here today, and we got a lot of cool enchantments of the last few days. We've already got a format full of cool enchantments for stuff like this. Obviously, five enchantments on the battlefield is a lot of permanence to ask for to turn this card on. Although we do get to save our enchantments from removal every turn, which is really cool, regardless of whether the card is turned on or not. But once it is, the card is fairly powerful. Now, we can play things like Banishing Light, Silk Wrap, Suspension Field to take care of their creatures early, and then those creatures will, or those enchantments will become creatures a little later on, which is really cool. We can also use this uh, to good effect with Myth Realized, um, Citadel Siege, Spear of Heliod. There's a lot of things we can use with this. Um, Dictate of Heliod is a good idea. I had a lot of countless battles. I mean, we can keep going. So if anybody wants to see a mono-white enchantments deck, oh, um, um, Blessed Spirits, the thing I just bought a second ago, all goes in this. So if anybody wants to see mono-white enchantments before Origins comes out, I'm more than willing to build that or anything else that you have ideas for. Um, I would love to build because I love playing with these things. I love seeing what cards can do before they come out. But in any case, I, I do think this card is very interesting. A new Opalescence, people are calling it, and I can get I can get on that train. I loved Opalescence when it was around, but we don't have Replenish, so it's not as good. Um, but in any case, yeah, very, very decent, interesting, exciting card, although it's, it's very niche, so there's that to consider too. And finally, this... This here is Day's Undoing. I, I want to see reaction videos on YouTube to people seeing this card for the first time. This card is, is very exciting. A, a new time twister, although that very last line of text is pretty horrible. Um, they get to go with their new grip full of cards before we get to do anything. Um, people are saying in Control, just hold back until you have seven or eight, you know, which is a lot of mana. But Control gets there easy. It gets its drops and holds off the game until we go long. But in any case, you basically you play this and then you can counter anything they play and then go. Which is, it sounds good, but Control doesn't want them to draw cards. I'm just, I don't know about that. Now what I do want to do is first turn Elvish Mystic, second turn Sphinx's Tutelage, third turn this, and mill them like 25, 30 cards. That, that would be super sweet, <laughs> if you think about it. But obviously that seems a little casual. This card probably has insane interactions in nearly every format we play Magic in. Standard, Modern, Legacy, Commander. This will have interactions, will have a lot of, of play. So I definitely think that this is, this is a super impactful card. Let me know what you guys think. I don't think that it's incredible, but I do think it'll have plenty of decks that it is in. <laughs> Maybe some combo things, and again, that Sphinx's Tutelage combo sounds better the more I think about it. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think of all of these cards, especially the last few we spoiled here, and um, if you want us to make any decks with any of these cards, we'd be more than down to do that. Remember, if you like this content, please hit the thumbs up button. It helps us a lot. Comment. We want to know what you guys think about these. Share. Sharing our videos gets it out to more people, and that helps us grow, too. So, do all those things. Sub if you haven't yet for more Magic Origins spoilers because there's going to be a lot of them this week. I'm Dev from Strictly Better MTG. Thanks for watching, my wizards.